In this section, we are looking at adding integers. If you look in the book, if you follow along in the book, you can find a bunch of little rules to follow. I, I don't do that. I'm going to try to explain it to you in a way that makes sense to me so that I don't have to think about rules. And it goes back to what we saw in the last video about the strength of a number. Okay. When we are talking about adding, I want you to understand the correct terminology here. Okay. The word sum is the result of adding. Okay. And the pieces that you are adding are called the add-ins. These are the pieces of the sum. So I want you to know the proper names for these. Later on when we start talking about multiplying, there are different words we use for the pieces that are part of a multiplication problem. Okay. So when you have add-ins, those are the guys that you're adding together to get your sum. Now, we could do things very easily like this. If I have 5 plus 7, okay, if I look at this number, what is the sign of that number? When there is no sign given, when there is no sign indicated, it is understood to be positive. And you see here I'm adding to that 7. And so that guy is, it's a positive 7. So if I take two positives and combine them, what should you get? You should still get a positive, right? If I give you $5 and then I give you $7, what has happened? So all together I've given you $12, so it's a positive 12, right? Now, I would write this as just a 12. When you see things in the textbook, they may put a, a plus there. Kind of, you know, up a little bit to distinguish it from the plus symbol. So we have a positive 12. Is that cool? Now, what if I do this? If I have negative 8, I'm going to use the convention that they use here. Say negative 4. Negative you say that with a question mark. <laughs> I will do that a lot. <laughs> well, we're going to have to work on that. The answer here is negative 12. Now, I want us to understand what this means to us. Okay? Right here, that means a negative 8. You find what works for you. Is it food? Is it weight? Is it money? Is it football? Is it temperature? I don't know. You've got to find that out for you. If I have a minus 8, maybe that means, say, you lost 8 pounds. If I lose 8 pounds, and then I add what? Another loss of four pounds. What have I done altogether? If I lose eight pounds and then I lose four more pounds, what have I done? I have a loss of 12 pounds, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. On the first down play, the Texans lost eight yards because the quarterback of the day got sacked. And then since we were, had already lost eight yards, we said, let's run the ball, and we get stuffed for four yards. What have we done on those two consecutive plays? We've lost a total of 12 yards, right? Yes. Can you make the connection there? Mm -hmm. You're on Jeopardy. We're having a good day, right? We lose $400. And then we have another loss of You didn't do too well. $1,500. I'm combining negative numbers, right? <laughs> so I'm moving further and further left on the number line. If I lose 400 and then I lose 1,500, what have I done altogether? I've lost $1,900. Do you all agree with that? Yes. No es bueno, right? What we're going to look at next time is what if we were to take something like this. If I have negative 11,
and a positive 5. If I'm trying to combine these guys, if I look at this number, you get it right in your head. Are you losing pounds? Are you losing money? Are you losing yards? It's a loss, right? It's a negative. If you lose 11, and then you do what? Then you gain five. This is where we talk about a net change. If you lose 11, but then you gain five. Think about this in terms of weight. I, one week I lost 11 pounds, the next week I gained five pounds. From where I started, where am I now? I'm six pounds less, right? Think about it this way. If you were on the number line right here, here's zero. If you start at zero, if you are over here, this is minus 11, right? But then you gain five. Is getting five enough to get you back on the positive side? No, no. no getting five would only get you about right here. Do you all agree? Yeah. Right. So your answer ends up being where? Negative. Your answer ends up being negative. Now, go back to the last video. We talked about absolute value, right? Between these two numbers, a negative 11 and a positive 5, which one has the, which one is stronger? Which one has the larger absolute value? This one is. Since he is the stronger number, he will determine your result, if it's going to be positive or negative. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to do a lot more of these examples next time. We're going to go to the board to do this. We're going to re record a lot more videos. So look ahead what's in the book, look at 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. .1 and please make sure that you know your basic properties for addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and then we're going to be set.